Hey guys, this is John Carnell, and I am here to present the second jab drop and doing is setting up Genesis Cloud and then setting up uh, the permissions, the integration, which is essentially where we're going to hold our credentials that we want to pass to our function, and then a shell data action that we're not quite ready to, to leverage the function yet, but it builds the contract and it uh, will allow us to see the ins and outs of what goes on of translating data from the credential uh, vault or integration uh, credentials over to the data action. So with that being said, I've logged into my Genesis Cloud application. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to roles and permissions. And I'm going to have to make sure that uh, any of the work that I'm going to do, I have permissions on a role that I'm in. So to use the Genesis Cloud functions, I'm just going to add myself, uh, add a permission to uh, my master admin role, which you know is assigned to me, so I'll be able to see it. Now from here, I have to give myself the integrations. Um, I believe it is the integrations action function, action function role, and in this case, I've already got it assigned to myself. If you don't see it here, it probably means that you haven't been set up in the beta and been added to the kind of the feature toggle that controls who can and cannot use um, Genesis Cloud Functions. If you see it here, make sure that you've selected integrations, action functions, all permissions. You'll need that in order to start working with integration functions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to configure two more pieces of information. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my integration. And this is kind of the overarching container for my uh, Genesis Cloud data action that's going to then contain my function. So for my integration, I'm going to come out here. And I am going to come up to the upper right-hand corner here. And I'm going to click on integration. And I'm just going to type in the word function. All right. And there's going to be function data actions out here. So I'm going to hit install. And uh, let's change the name of this. We're going to call this My Genesis Cloud Function Integration. Not being particularly uh, useful here or uh, creative with our name. But then I'm going to go out and I'm going to look at my properties uh, and my configuration. And the thing, the field that I'm, the thing that I'm interested in is my credentials. Because remember what I said is the cool thing about Genesis Cloud Functions is I can now pass sensitive values like a client certificate down to custom code that then can be carried out and executed within Genesis Cloud. So to do this on my Genesis Cloud data action using a function, I have to set up my integration. I have to go into the configuration. I have to add a credential field. So let's go ahead and we're going to add two fields because we're just going to use this as uh, an example of setting values. So let's go out here and I'm going to set uh, a new credential field, and I'm going to call this uh, example password. This could be API key. This could be whatever. But let's just say my oh, uh, my password one two three four two three four, and then oh, let me fix that word one two three four. And then I'm going to add another credential field, and I'm going to call this example certificate base sixty four. And I'm going to take my certificate that I would normally uh, want to be able to pass in my API call, and I'm just going to drop it in here as plain text or anything or been signed by my org. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Save. Now, remember, when we're setting up credentials for an integration, uh, the credentials are a one-way thing. I can't see them when I bring them up after they've already been set. And nobody else can access them, including Genesis support staff. They're just there. It's like a password vault. They're there. They can be accessed by my data action. But even my data action can't really do anything with it. So now let's go out here and just validate that my integration has been set up. And so I'm just going to search. I'm going to say my integration set up. Uh, and it looks like I already had one out there. So let's go delete my old one because you can have two integrations with the exact same name. And now I'm going to make this one active. All right, so wait for that to turn active. Okay, that's been set active. 
So now a integration can have one or more data actions associated with it. So now let's go out and create my action. So I'm going to come out to actions. And since I'm not going to create this thing by hand for purposes of this demo, I've already exported it and I'm going to import it. So I'm going to go hit import and I'm going to browse out here and I'm going to select my Genesis Cloud function action example. And this contains my data action definitions. It has all my input and output contracts. It also has all my request template mappings. So of course, when I do that, I have to go out there and I have to uh, select the integration that I want to associate with my action. So by selecting the integration, I can have access to the credentials that are associated with that integration. So, and I'm going to give this one a more meaningful name. So how about we call this my certificate function? All right, again, nothing really original about my certificate function. And what we should see now is the Genesis Cloud, Cloud UI is now bringing this in and it's now imported. And if I go out here and I look at my data action, I can see my contract that's basically been set up for my inputs and my outputs. Now, for those of you guys that know that that contract setup can be set up um, manually, but there's also configuration work that does the mapping of the contract values and also the mapping of data over to uh, the from the integration credential. So I want in particular to show two things. So if you look at our data action, we're going out to credentials, and that's basically the credentials associated with the integration. And we're going to pull our example password and we're going to map it to a header value that's going to be passed down to my function. In addition, on the actual body of the function, I'm going to pass the certificate down to the function. So here's uh, how we reference that certificate value that we had with credentials.example certificate base 64. And you can also see we have the values that we've set up in our contract and we're specifying how they're going to be passed down to our function. So this is, if you think about the, the contract, it basically represents what's facing to the external world, to the architect flow. But then using the request body template, we're going to map that to the event that's going to be passed down to our function, or if it were some other like our REST API or our, our uh, Google Cloud function, right? It would be the values and how they're going to map down to that actual value. So we're going to go ahead and save that as a draft. So now, now that we've got that all set up, we're going to actually go out and write our function. And when we write our function, that's going to be in another dev drop, but we're basically going to be taking the data that's being passed from this contract from this data action into our function and doing something with it. So I hope that's clear to everybody. Uh, let me know. Uh, please feel free to add in the comments if you have any comments on the video about why I didn't see anything else. But otherwise, I will talk to you guys later, and we will go and uh, uh, dive into how to write and test the function locally. And then I'll show you guys how to upload it, the function up into Genesis Cloud so that we can actually use it and test it out. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.